Hey what's up, I'm Rachel Starr. This is the response video to the video I posted last week, Ask a Schizophrenic, uh, asking people if they had any questions to send them to me. Uh, so I'm gonna knock out all those questions. I got a lot in, so thank you so much. I, um, I'm really glad that people wanted to ask questions. So yeah, uh, first thing I wanna say is that for those who don't know, I am a paranoid schizophrenic. Um, I've been diagnosed with other things, bipolar, um, schizoaffective disorder, schizoid personality, um, dysthymia, depression, all those different things. Um, I tend to go with schizophrenic the most because I had testing done and the testing said schizophrenic. And as far as the different doctors I've been to, um, most have said schizophrenia versus the others. So that's why I tend to go with that. Um, also, obviously, I'm not a doctor, um, which I'll probably have to reiterate a couple times because I'll ask very personal questions as far as your own um, disorders and um, issues you're going through. So please understand you need to talk to a doctor about all this stuff. I can only tell you from my personal experiences, okay? So that's just my personal experiences that I'll use to answer your questions. And speaking of that, okay. So my, this being the question, my doctor said ECT was only good for depression. Since my depression isn't bad enough, I could lie and get the ECT. Would I be a new person with a whole new world? Um, okay, you should not be looking into ECT um, if you don't like your life. A lot of people have asked me before, um, would ECT be suggested for things you want to forget? No. Um, ECT uh, is to help with depression and those who don't know ECT is electroconvulsive therapy or electric shock therapy which I had a few years back. For me it worked wonders. Um, it, it helped knock out a lot of my deep deep depression and paranoia and OCD and that in turn dealing with those very negative things in my life helped me in a way um, have a new outlook on life. Did it make me someone new? Um, people ask, does it change your personality? In a way it does because I, I was able to have more energy. I was able to be more outgoing. I think that was always me. It's just the depression really um, wore me down. Um, and ECT is kind of a last, well for me, they did it as a last resort. It wasn't, they didn't rush me. It took me a long time to get approved um, to even have it. So it's not, you know, something to take lightly that, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I want a second chance at life. You can have a second chance at any time. You don't need um, to go have ECT for the wrong reasons. So that's my response though. Pros and cons of the different treatments that you have tried. Uh, as far as people love to ask me exact question about medications, I've been on so many, I have no idea. Like I, probably hundreds over the years that I was on medications. Um, my biggest problem with me is that they would work for a month and then they would kind of stop working or the side effects would just be so horrible. Um, I was on lithium for a while that made me ridiculously sick to my stomach, which it does for a lot of people. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, either made me really, really tired or really, really awake. And then of course there was the weight gain um, and just a feeling of numbness and different things. Pretty much just all the medications I had trouble with. Um, now on the opposite spectrum there, the ECT, uh, it caused uh, brain damage for me, memory loss and stuff like that. So those would be the cons. Um, the biggest pro being to the medication, it did offer temporary relief for me, but nothing long term. Um, the pros for the ECT, it, it, um, it did help knock out a lot of bad things and made my schizophrenia, because it took away that depression and a lot of other stuff, it made my schizophrenia more manageable. Okay, it does not fix anything, but it did make it more manageable. All right, next. I suffer from panic disorder and OCD combined with agoraphobia, not to mention intrusive thoughts that won't go away um, unless I drink or take pills. Would someone like me benefit from ECT? Um, for me, my OCD had gotten really, really bad towards, and I say the end being the end before I had the ECT. Um, I, I didn't, I, I don't know. I was completely out of it a lot of times, like not even mentally here. Um, my OCD had taken over to the fact that I was just, I couldn't go to bed at night because for when I have to just keep checking my closet, checking my closet, checking my closet, you know, I'd have to get up and just do things over and over and over and over and over and over and over. And for some reason, um, uh, when I, after I had the ECT, it seemed to knock out the OCD. Um, 
and that helped me. It also took out my paranoia, which I don't, I've never had agoraphobia, but I'd assume maybe it has to do with paranoia. So in my experience, I would say you could benefit from it, but I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I hope that helps. Um, I'd say talk to your doctor really in detail and see what they say. Um, I don't think um, your current thing of drinking to deal with it, obviously that, that's not going to that's not going to help you in the long run. Okay. Have you ever thought of doing a wet t-shirt contest? Ironically, that was one of the schizo questions I was sent. Um, no, I've never done that. Thank you, though. Moving on. What movies do you think most accurately and inaccurately portray schizophrenia? Um, there are so many that are inaccurate. I, I, I yeah. Uh, like, Law & Order loves to pick on schizos so much. It's crazy. It's like, um... It, there's just ton. Anyone who was in the theater when I watched The Roommate would have known I had an issue with it. Um, the movie came out recently about this roommate going crazy and killing everyone and becoming obsessed. Yeah, this, there's tons that inaccurately portray schizo and mental disorders. Um, accurately, um, the best movie to accurately get an idea of um, schizophrenia, uh, one of them that a lot of people are actually against, but I really like it, is The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, it's not a horror movie like the title and a lot of the trailers led you to believe. It's actually like a mental movie. So I would highly suggest checking out The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Um, I remember my brother bought that movie and I was watching it with him and it like blew my mind because it was like, oh my gosh, I, I identified 100% with that character and the stuff she went through. Um, Another one, if you've ever seen the children's movie Coraline, where her um, imagination world, her like fake world starts to fall apart and turn like dark and evil and like the dad becomes this twisted spider character and stuff, that's exactly like my hallucinations. Like I watched it, I was like, oh my god, that's my hallucinations. Like I always have a hard time describing them to people, um, how things get distorted and that it's like they get distorted and creepy and, and evil and, and that's it was just like that scene in that movie. I was like, oh my gosh, that's it. So anyway, okay. Um, are you still using medicine since the ECT? Uh, I probably should be on more medicine if it were, um, I, I think if the doctors just may, could make me, they would have me on antipsychotics and different things. Um, but I currently only take um, depression pills I'm terrible at taking them. Right now I take them regularly, but I, I just sometimes I don't like the way they make me feel and I'll be like, oh, I can do good without them and then I crash. Um, I, I choose not to go on other medication because I have found that I'm pretty, I'm able to manage my schizophrenia okay. As far as would I in the future go back on um, antipsychotics and different things like that, uh, yeah, I would if I had to. I right now rather try and uh, keep managing the way I am with a lot of lifestyle changes and stuff. But if I had to go back on medication, yes, I would. Do you see things that aren't there? Yes, I do all the time. Um, it's kind of funny because I don't really react to them anymore because I'm so used to seeing them that I don't even think about it. Uh, which is another thing that's odd about my schizophrenia, which has led to me having different diagnoses, is that most people with schizophrenia do not have visual hallucinations. They only have audio hallucinations, which while I do have audio hallucinations, I've never necessarily heard like um, voices talking in my head. I'll sometimes hear them talking, but not like they're holding a conversation. It's more like someone calls out my name um, or things like that. It's not necessarily like a, a, a conversation like a lot of schizophrenics have. Um, and most really don't have visual hallucinations, which I have... Um, I mean, some days it's like constant. There are constant hallucinations. Other days I can go, you know, a couple days at a time without necessarily anything happening. I can't, you know, I don't know. Um, I have manic episodes and I am diagnosed with bipolar 1 disorder. But summer mania is grandeur and fun and winter mania is paranoia and hell. Once the episode ends, I, become, I can come off as normal. Do you share that same experience since you don't seem mentally ill unless you tell people? Uh, I've gotten to the point now where, yeah, people don't know unless I tell them. And uh, I think a couple years back, 
it would have been way more obvious something was wrong um, before I had the ECT, those, um, when I got towards the end there, it, uh, it, it would have been extremely obvious. It was hard for me to hold a job. It was, you know, little things were hard to do. People don't get it. Like if you've never had like deep depression, like how hard it is, like when people say, you know, just taking a shower is like next to impossible some days. Cause it's like, you just cannot get out of bed. Um, you just can't. It doesn't make sense why, but you can't. Um, but I've gotten to the point now, yeah, where people really don't know unless I tell them. They can sometimes see um, symptoms manifest. Uh, for one, like the other day I was at my job and someone commented at how um, uh, big my pupils were in my eyes. They're like, oh my gosh, your eyes, like they're huge, like the pupils. And that's the thing that um, whenever my eyes dilate, that means I'm hallucinating. Um, not always, but that's a, a huge uh, factor if my eyes dilate. So. I was like, oh God, uh, that's, it's good for me to know. Um, another ones, if sometimes I'm walking crooked, my speech will start to slur. Um, I try and notice my speech slurring, but it's really hard for me to catch it. Now and then I'll like hear it, but sometimes other people will comment on my speech and I'll be like, okay, that means I'm getting, I'm starting to get sick is when the speech starts slurring. On set when I'm doing movie shoots and um, a lot of times when I'm on sets uh, with movie shoots and stuff, I'll tell the PAs if they hear my um, speech starting to slur, just let me know. A lot of people I think are scared to like say anything, but I'm like, let me know because I need to know so I can correct it. Oops, more questions. When did you first become aware of the symptoms of schizophrenia? What was it like? That's really hard. Um, I didn't realize I was different until um, 16, 17. I grew up my whole life um, seeing things. And it's funny because I grew up with like seeing monsters and stuff. And you always hear like growing up like monsters in your closet, monsters under your bed. And so the fact that I actually saw these monsters, I thought that's what people were talking about. It, I didn't know even until I was, you know, a teenager that other people didn't actually see the monsters. I thought, yeah, that's what people were talking about. You know, why else would you say there was a monster in your closet unless you actually saw him standing there, you know, looking at you, coming out of the closet and standing by your bed, um, hovering above you, um, looking at me from under the bed, uh, standing in the corners of my room, things like I just grew up seeing them. So I, I just thought everyone did. I thought it was like, you know, just dreaming when you're awake. Uh, it wasn't until I, I was, I guess 17, 16, 17, that I was like telling people this, like we were just talking and I said it and my friends were like, what are you talking about, Rachel? And I'm like, y'all don't see this? Really? <laughs> well, now I feel weird. Um, so that was the first time I think I realized that there was something different about me that and it just never really occurred to me before that that was different. Um, when I was 17 though, specifically, I started getting much worse. Um, just gory thoughts became intrusive thoughts, started ripping in through my head. Um, I, the depression got bad. I started having manic episodes. Um, and it just, it got out of control for around 17 to I guess 22, 23. Those were like really bad times. Um, and they were really scary because a lot of me, I didn't know what was happening and didn't want to accept that there was something wrong with me, you know. Um, let's see here. Is there a positive experience you have had that you would not have experienced without schizophrenia? Tons of them. I've had so many um, great things that have happened. I've got to meet tons of other people, uh, maybe like someone watching this video who have schizophrenia of other, other mental disorders. I've had people, you know, even that don't necessarily have something like that, but when they find out that I have it, they feel more comfortable to share things with me and tell me things. And it, I, I love that. I love being able to help people. I love making people know they're not alone. And it makes me in turn feel not alone. Uh, when I first got this, I, I felt like a freak. I felt like, oh my God, everyone, they're going to lock me up. I was terrified and it, I just, I felt all alone. And so for me to be able to make videos and talk openly about it, I'm able to find other people like me. So I'm not just doing it to help others. I'm doing it, you know, to help myself. So that's one thing. Also schizophrenia makes me incredibly creative. Um, I have, I, I was talking to someone last night and I was telling them uh, my movie plans and I like blew her mind when she realized that I had was like four, 
I'm working on a current one, I'm working on the one that comes after. I'd already thought about the one after that, and in reality I have hundreds planned out. And she was shocked that I had all this stuff planned out and so far into the future and what comes next, and um, I'm, I'm already planning stuff for, you know, three movies away working on things. I'm like, yeah, it's just how my mind works. I'm constantly, constantly coming up with ideas and stuff I want to do and pretty much what can I do with these resources that are currently, you know, it just goes on and on. And I do attribute a lot of that to the schizophrenia. Um, having my mind work the way it does, it doesn't seem to really work on like a line that I think most people's mind is like on different levels and dimensions. I'm like all over the place at once thinking about things. And I do think it's a lot of schizo. If you could eliminate one symptom of your condition, what would it be? The depression. Hands down. Um, I can deal with most everything else except the depression is what just wears me down. You know, and it's, it's just a dangerous road to go on. I hate when I get really depressive episodes because it's, it's like there's nothing I can do to make it go away. Um, so yeah, the depression. That's it. I can deal with the hallucinations. I can deal with OCD. I can deal with, you know, confusion, not being able to read, I can, things like that I can deal with, you know, but the depression that, that, yeah. yeah. Are you scared of going crazy? I go back and forth on this subject. Yes and no. I think in, um, when I'm like, how not in a good time, I'm like, if I were to go in like fully insane, um, I have been fully insane for a little bit, but I've always managed to be able to come back to reality. But I have to accept that, you know, one day I might not come back. And that is a scary thought, but I've, um, in some days, like, I'm at peace with the fact that if it happens, um, I know it's not like I just drop off the face of the earth, like, I'm still there in my head, and in a way it's like, you know, another, another journey. But then, of course, if I have to actually, like, when I'm on the verge of going crazy or when I'm in actually one of those, um, um, episodes, it's, I, I'm terrified because all I'm thinking is, Rachel, you gotta wake up. You've gotta wake up and get out of this. You gotta, you know, you gotta come back. And it's, it's hard to understand. It's like I'm in, um, there's multiple me's. There's like the, the one that can still think and talk. And it's like, I hear that one, like I'm talking to myself, but then there's the part of me that's getting confused and twisted. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but the one that talks is always, you gotta come back. You gotta wake up. Rachel, focus. You gotta come out of this. Focus on, you know, it's almost like I'm talking myself through the episode. And I've been lucky that each time it has lifted and I've been able to fully come back. But yeah, I, I don't know. That is always the thought in my back of my head that I won't come back from one. Um, does ECT cause memory loss, especially with people you know? I don't know if it does for everyone. It's well known that ECT can cause brain damage and memory loss. Yes. Um, I had memory loss, but not with people I knew. Um, for instance, I still knew my mom and dad and my immediate family members. I had more issues with remembering details about them. I didn't necessarily remember that, I guess, um, friends of the family had passed away. Even though I might have went to their funeral, I didn't necessarily remember things like that. I would think so-and-so was still alive. Um, and even to this day, someone that could have died a year ago, I still might think is alive, like getting confused on things like that. So I say it's not that I necessarily forgot actual people, it's just I forgot sometimes major details about them or s things that happened to them. Um, I, there's a lot of stuff about my brother that the other day my mom was talking, I'm like, I do not remember any of that. There's no way. And she's like, yes, that happened. And I no recollection of like three years of my brother's life, like details from it, no clue. Not that I wasn't there, I just, no memory that it happened whatsoever. So that's my experience. Um, other people may have actually forgotten, you know, people. Do you have trouble accepting your diagnosis? Um, now I don't, I'm totally fine with it now. Um, like it doesn't phase me at all to say I'm a schizophrenic, I have schizophrenia, I have a mental disorder, so what? So what? Everyone has, you know, shit in their life. So what? Uh, back when I was first having to deal with it, yes, uh, it was like a devastating blow. It was, and I think it wasn't so much that there was something wrong with me, it was that I felt alone and 
I was scared what people would think and do to me. I was scared I was gonna, I don't, because I didn't know much about it, I was literally afraid someone was gonna like come to the door and just like lock me up in an insane asylum. Like I, I, you know, people were gonna be frightened of me and I didn't want anyone to know. I didn't, you know. But now, yeah, so what? Who cares? You know, everyone deals with stuff, so. That's how I am now about it, I don't care. Um, how do you feel about sterilizing people with schizophrenia? Uh, I live in South Carolina, which is, um, those of you who keep up with the news, really, we're right under North Carolina, but North Carolina um, has gotten in trouble for, I think, like in the 40s and 50s and 60s even, um, sterilizing people that were seen to be by the government unfit to have children. And my issue, um, and I'm... First, let me take me out of the equation, like personally. My issue is, so let's say you decide to be like, okay, well, people with schizophrenia need to be sterilized because they shouldn't be having children because their children are just gonna have it and go on and on and on. Well, the issue with that is like, if you say that, then what's gonna stop you from picking another disorder? Okay, so now people with bipolar can't have children. Um, what about cancer? Cancer, you know, if your dad had cancer, you're more likely to have cancer. So what about people with cancer can't have children? Um, so I think that's a very slippery slope for one if you were going to say a certain group of people can't be trusted then what's to stop you from this group and this group and this group and this group and it, it just goes downhill from there so that's one side of the argument the other side of the argument is um, you know while it's easy to say well a person in a mental hospital obviously can't raise a child or very well I could say the same thing about a 14 year old girl does that mean we take away her child who's been, you know, made a stupid decision? No, because people can, a 14 year old girl, while it's not the ideal situation and she needs a strong family unit around her to help her, I believe the same thing with people with schizophrenia and other disorders, not just schizophrenia. I think you would need a strong um, family group to help raise that child. And I don't necessarily mean a mom and dad, I mean people that are willing to you know, sacrifice to help take care of a child. Now, my own personal um, thing is that I do come from um, one side of my family has mental disorders very strongly in it. So if one of them had been sterilized, then I wouldn't be here. So I don't agree, you know, on that front that because had something happened, then I wouldn't be here. Um, the other thing is just that, I mean, think how many people throughout history have had problems and, you know, so many of our great artists and stuff were known to have mental, crazy mental disorders and stuff. So you would have, you know, in sterilizing anyone, you risk other things that'll happen, um, great things that'll come. Like I said, I, my schizophrenia has led to why I'm so creative. So. Anyway, uh, thank you for asking the question, because I do know people think about it, so. Has anyone ever been mean to you about it? Uh, yeah, I've had death threats, I've had um, people get angry, I've lost jobs when people found out, uh, I've had rumors started about me. <sighs> you know, yeah, people can be like jerks and stupid and uninformed. Uh, you know, I once, unfortunately for the person, overheard a phone conversation where the person in the phone was like they were on speakerphone I didn't realize it and so when I was um, living in a dorm and they RA type person or whatever knew I had was struggling they, they knew I had depression of all they didn't even know I had schizo back then I had depression and they pretty much said don't listen to anything she has she's messed up she has depression so she's probably making it up okay <laughs> You know, and I remember being, I won't, oh man, I was so mad, but, you know, oh, and I, of course, took the actions there with the school and whatever, but they really go anywhere. Have you ever wanted to kill anybody? I'm assuming when you say that you're referring to my mental disorder. Um, no, I've never, like, wanted to go after and kill anybody, do anything crazy like that. I think as far as um, any human being gets upset and has feelings, like, I think it's just a natural human, like, emotion and feeling to feel rage and anger when you've been hurt and to want to be violent towards people. Um, I think that's just a normal human emotion. However, as far as with schizophrenia, I've never been like, 
oh, I want to go hack people up for fun. That's never went through my mind. Um, schizos like aren't I popular? I mean, contrary to popular belief, uh, we're not violent. Uh, most schizophrenics um, only are violent when um, they're tried to be hurt or they don't understand what's going on around them. Schizos tend to um, retreat inside themselves, which is why it's hard because they get so lost in their own heads. Um, they're they're not the kind that are going to go out and kill everybody. They just retreat inside themselves and are more likely to hurt themselves, more likely as far as to kill anybody uh, to kill themselves and commit suicide, not to lash out at others. Uh, okay. What term do you prefer? What the? What term do you prefer when people refer to patients with mental illness? Um, well, not illness. I actually I don't like the phrase mental illness because an illness makes you sound sick. Um, and I don't think people with schizophrenia or bipolar or anything else are sick. I think it's a disorder. I think you view the world differently. I think your mind works differently. And I once told someone, you know, our minds are different and our the world was not made for our minds. So we have to make adjustments to fit into a normal world. Okay. Does that mean we're sick? Does that mean, you know, no, it just means we're going to have to make adjustments. It's like, let's say if you're born without an arm. Unfortunately, most of the world is made for two armed people. So you're going to have to make adjustments. It's not there's anything wrong with you. It's not like, you know, you're sick because you don't have an arm. It's just you don't have an arm. So you have to make adjustments to survive. Um, so I don't like illness. Um, uh, I prefer to say mental disorders. I have no problem with being called a schizophrenic. I have no problem with schizophrenia. Um, I tend to say schizo a lot because it's shorter. A lot of schizophrenics do not like that term. Um, doesn't bother me. As long as people aren't saying it meanly, it's hard to like upset me, you know, as long as you're, you know, it's fine if people don't know what's the correct term to say as long as they're not trying to be mean about it, you know. But mental illness is the only one I'm not a big fan of because of the illness thing. So I like I like mental disorder. I want to be a psychiatrist. What advice do you have for me? I think that's awesome. Um, a lot of people are interested in the mind and how it works. The biggest thing is to understand that people with mental disorders are people. No matter how far gone they seem, there's still a person in there. Um, and same thing with people with Alzheimer's and stuff like that. There's still a person, there still is that person, that person's personality um, is still inside of them. They're not just, they don't become someone different. They don't, you know, just the switch isn't turned off on them. I just, it, just learn, you know, to have compassion. My biggest beast were that they, so me and my psychiatrist were like cold and angry. Um, you would see them for 15 minutes. They were like annoyed to talk to me. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is 15 minutes and it costs like $200 and you're annoyed? You're annoyed? I'm like, have monsters sitting on the couch here with me and you're annoyed? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so already annoyed the psychiatrist who's getting paid like a buttload of money where I'm like juggling, you know, trying to hold part-time jobs and go to school full-time and deal with my, you know, my brain crumbling. But you're annoyed. I'm sorry. <laughs> so yeah, I, a lot of them I think are very cynical and jaded and, and I would imagine it is hard. But still, you gotta have compassion because... Are there any good books you suggest? Um, yes. Uh, one of them is An Unquiet Mind. It is an amazing book um, for people with mental disorders and for people who um, uh, uh, want to know more and for people who have like family members, loved ones with mental disorders. An Unquiet Mind. And I'll put like the title and stuff like right here. It's just it's a great book and I highly suggest it. Um, I've read other books that some have helped a lot of like self-help type books for schizophrenics or bipolars or people with mental disorders. You know, some have helped, some are, I feel are just like fluffy crap that I'm like, yay, okay, keep your head up, okay, <laughs> I'll keep my head up, but whatever. Um, but yeah, An Unquiet Mind is an amazing book about this woman and her story. It's just, um, it'll definitely, if you have a mental disorder, it'll definitely give you hope that seeing what this woman has done with her life is really amazing. Um, my girl, my girlfriend, yeah, well, not my girlfriend, anyway, my girlfriend has schizophrenia. What can I do to help her? Um, 
kind of like what goes back to the psychiatrist um, thing. Just have compassion. Understand that her mind may not work the same way that yours does. Um, so be, you know, be sympathetic with that. Help her. Um, don't get, you know, be slow to anger and different things with that because she may not be, you know, may not fully get things right away. Um, she may be confused. I get confused so easily when, um, especially when my head's starting to to get shaky. My, I have a hard time grasping concepts and numbers. Um, I don't do well with people that are like snapping at me, um, especially like directions where I'm like in the car trying to give directions because it's like the, the turn's coming up and I can't figure out like left or right or which way is left and which way is right and you know it all like comes, it becomes too much and it just stresses me out and then you know it just everything starts coming unraveled really quickly. So just, I would say, be anyone who has a loved one in schizophrenia, just be compassionate and understand that, you know, they may be trying really, really hard. Just take it slow and find different ways of communicating or helping them with things. Um, and a good last question to end on here. If you could get cured, would you? Um, First of all, there is no cure for schizophrenia, bipolar, and stuff. You can only manage it. As far as if someone tomorrow was like, you know what, Rachel, I can give you a shot. You will be perfectly, like, all this will go away. I probably wouldn't take it because I don't believe it's something that I need to be cured from. I believe it's a different way of looking at the world. I believe um, it's an overactive imagination in a lot of ways as far as the things that I see that I think it's amazing in a way that my mind can create create things that aren't there. I think it's amazing that my mind can create voices and stuff that, that aren't being said. It can distort things in ways and I think I think that's amazing. I wish it didn't have things bad things that went along with it like the depression, but you know, it's kinda like owning a kick ass car. It's awesome but you still gotta pay insurance and gas and keep it up and take it on oil changes. Like, it's still like a lot of sucky things to owning a car, but overall, you know, good outweighs the bad. And I feel like with my schizophrenia, the good outweighs the bad. Um, so would I get a cure? I know earlier in my life I probably would be like, yes, at this current point in my life, I'd be like, no, I have no desire for this, um, to go away, I just want to be able to manage it better and be able to control my life. Um, and I think anyone out there who's hurting, I do think that finding things, adjustments to manage your life will make it easier for you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, those are just my thoughts on it. Um, my current thoughts on everything. I do hope anyone out there um, know that you are not alone. There are lots of other people who have mental disorders. Um, lots of, and a lot of people don't understand, but so what? We all deal with stuff. You know, I, I've gotten to the point, I'm 26 now. I've gotten to the point in my life, I'm just like, so what? You know, love me, hate me, don't care, whatever. I don't care, I don't, I don't care. If you don't wanna think I exist, okay. Okay, whatever. Um, but I do hope anyone out there, if you're struggling with mental disorder or worried about something like that, don't be afraid like to get help. Don't be afraid to go and talk to a doctor. Um, look up stuff. If you're watching this video, you probably have the internet. Google stuff. Like, like don't be afraid to find it because you're not alone. And while schizophrenia and other disorders are like a huge thing to deal with, it's not the end of the world. It's not a death sentence. It's not like this horrible, horrible thing you can't come back from. It's a different way of looking at life. So, yeah, I'm Rachel Starr. I hope that helps. If anyone else that has any other questions, you're always free to um, message me and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I'm Rachel Starr and I'm out.